where in 2024 and last year there were actually lots of trending videos telling us that 8GB of VRAM just weren't enough to play recent games, with some of them actually claiming that 8GB of VRAM weren't even enough to play games at 1080p, at least of course the recent ones. Now my question is, is 8GB of VRAM really, really not enough for 2024? Do you absolutely need more than 8GB of VRAM to have a smooth gameplay experience? And I ask this because there are lots of things to have in consideration, like the fact that most recent game engines work differently from each other. Some games simply quit to desktop, for example, when they don't have enough VRAM, others will stutter like crazy, while other games will just, well, force the textures to a lower quality even if you choose the highest quality settings in the settings menu. And while this is a trick that some game engines do to ensure that we, we have some stability, let's say that, that means that you'll have lower textures, lower texture quality than the one you selected. With textures that will look like you're back in 2004. But at least not in terms of serial keys, not with today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. And we were talking about VRAM capacity, but there's another thing that we should consider. Bandwidth. When you're low on VRAM, the GPU will use bandwidth to refresh slash reallocate memory banks in order to, well, to load new game areas, for example. The thing is, we're in 2024 and we have a thing called ray tracing, which also needs a lot more bandwidth due to making way, way more calls. Way more data transferred, let's say that. And that means that the bandwidth now has to suffice for both VRAM reallocation and ray tracing. But then you might say, well, I don't even care about ray tracing and I never did for a single second of my life. But then enters direct storage. And direct storage was introduced a couple of years ago and is a technology that allows the process of loading textures to the GPU to skip the CPU and RAM. And this allows for much lower loading times, of course, in modern games, but once again, uses bandwidth. So more and more games are using direct storage now, it started with Forspoken, then we have also Forza Motorsport, we have Ratchet and & Clank, and even if you're not using ray tracing, the bandwidth will still be needed to refresh the, the VRAM allocation, of course, and direct storage. And of course, if you put ray tracing in the mix... <laughs> For the benchmarks, we'll have the RTX 3078 GB versus the RX 6750 XT 12 GB. And we all know that the RTX 3070 is faster, especially faster in ray tracing, of course, but will it still be faster when running out of VRAM? Let's see the numbers. Today we start with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora with high settings preset. Avatar always has ray tracing enabled and that's the main reason why the RTX 3070 is so much faster. And I sincerely thought the difference would be bigger. But even when we use ultra settings, the difference, well, is not that big with the RTX 3070 being 17% faster at 1080p and 21% faster at both 1440p and 4K, even with only 8GB VRAM. And this game allocates a lot more than that. As we move to Returnal, we start with maximum settings and no ray tracing and once again the RTX 3070 is performing consistently better than the RX 6750 XT, even at 4K, something that does not change with ray tracing. But even here, where the RX 6750 XT delivers much, much lower FPS, it also delivers slightly better frame times, as you can see in this small side-by-side -side comparison. Although in terms of ray tracing, the 3070 just delivers a much better experience, as it should. Hogwarts Legacy loves RAM and VRAM, but it was much worse at release and after some months it kind of got patched and now it works much better, although it still consumes RAM like crazy. One thing that you can see here is that even with the RTX 3070 having higher averages, apart from 4K, the RX 6750 XT delivers the same 1% lows. And that happens due to the lack of VRAM on the RTX 3070, showing that in this game, 8GB will suffice, but will handicap the performance a bit, with some texture streaming in the middle. And that is seen once again when using ray tracing. The RTX 3070 is much faster than the RX 6750, in this case 40% at 1080p and 52% at 1440p, 
but the 1% lows are the same. Meaning that even though the average FPS are much higher, the gameplay will present much more stutters, and once again due to lack of VRAM on the RTX 3070. In Resident Evil 4 we can see that the RX 6750 XT can indeed match the higher tier RTX 3070, although as soon as we enabled ray tracing, the RTX 3070 is just unusable. It was able to run the benchmark at 1080p, but it crashed a bit later, like it did at 1440p and 4K. But at these higher resolutions, it wasn't even able to complete the benchmark as the game would simply quit to the desktop with this error showing up. As for the RX 6750 XT, as it has 12GB VRAM, it ran the game with absolutely no issues, even at 4K. And Forza Horizon 5 is another game that loves VRAM and bandwidth. But even with this said, I was kind of surprised that the RX 6750 XT was able to outperform the RTX 3070 at 1080p and 1440p, of course when using ultra settings. This shows once again that with high FPS numbers you need higher bandwidth, and this might be why the RTX 3070 got left behind, as it was already using bandwidth to refresh its memory bank. Although as we select extreme settings, things change and the RTX 3070 is now the fastest card, even with only 8GB VRAM. I believe this also comes to optimization, maybe the Nvidia cards can use Tensor or CUDA cores to help in this game, as the extreme settings also use a higher ray tracing quality mode, so maybe that's it. With The Last of Us we have an even better scenario for the RX 6750 XT, where now it is faster in all scenarios, which is definitely an interesting result for a car that should be considerably slower across the board. But unlike Forza Horizon 5, raising the settings in this game actually shows up that here 8GB VRAM just aren't enough. With the RX 6750 XT being considerably faster at all resolutions in terms of averages, but especially faster in terms of 1% lows, showing how much more fluid the gameplay is. If you look at 4K for example, the RTX 3070 went as low as 2 FPS, with huge stutters, while the RX 6750 XT also had very low FPS, but the gameplay was smooth. Interesting results here. Now we have Spider-Man Remastered and Nvidia did have a recent update that improved the performance of their cards in this game quite a lot. But with that update, well, I also noticed that the game required much more bandwidth as I sometimes saw texture streaming happening, something that did not happen before. But well, here the RTX 3070 is considerably faster at all resolutions, but as we activate ray tracing things get ugly for the RTX 3070 because once again it performs better at 1080p and 1440p in terms of averages, but consistently delivers lower 1% lows, showing a stuttery gameplay as can be seen right now in the small gameplay I did, where the frame times are messy compared to the RX 6750 XT. And of course if we look at the 4K results, the RTX 3070 should be delivering at least 45 average FPS, but due to the lack of VRAM slash bandwidth, it is much slower than the RX 6750 XT. Ratchet & Clank is another particular scenario since this game uses direct storage like Forspoken and the upcoming Horizon Forbidden West. In this case the VRAM is already short on the RTX 3070 side with only 8GB VRAM while needing more bandwidth for direct storage, and this is why you see the RX 6750 XT outperforming it in terms of averages, but mainly in terms of 1% loads where the RX 6750 XT is 38% faster at 1080p and 57% faster at 1440p, delivering a much smoother experience. And when adding the need for even more bandwidth by enabling ray tracing, the much faster ray tracing card, the RTX 3070, gets to be barely ahead of the RX 6750 XT, while still delivering equal or lower 1% lows showing us that in 2024, 8GB of VRAM are only enough for 1080p, and even there it might slightly handicap your performance. Alan Wake 2 is a game that loves raw power, so it was kind of obvious that the RTX 3070 would be considerably faster than the RX 6750 XT here, delivering a much better experience at 1080p and 1440p. Although as soon as we enable ray tracing to medium settings and use FSR slash DLSS in the mix, things get much worse for the RTX 3070 that, well, is miles ahead of the RX 6750 XT at 1080p, but suffers from the lack of VRAM slash bandwidth at 1440p. 
being actually slower than the RX 6750 XT. And video cards do have an advantage in this game though, because as soon as I activate ray reconstruction, the bandwidth issues were no more, and the RTX 3070 was now 86% faster than the RX 6750 XT at 1080p and 89% faster at 1440p, completely demolishing the MD card in this scenario. And the last game is Starfield starting with the high settings preset. And although the RX 6750 XT is doing decently well, the RTX 3070 is just faster, as it should, delivering a better experience even at 4K with only 8GB VRAM. Something that does not change when using ultra settings, as the RTX 3070 is still the best performer. It seems that Starfield kind of loads big chunks of textures, and that's why Sam and Rebar make the difference in this game, but in terms of VRAM usage, well, the game doesn't really need that much to function well. Let's now move to the conclusion. So as you've seen, there are several things that can affect the performance in terms of VRAM capacity, and some things that, some things that can actually happen, sorry, is, well, game squitting, you can actually have uh, massive stuttering, you can have blurred out textures, or you can get the GPU just bottlenecking the FPS, since it doesn't have enough bandwidth to do everything, like it happens in Ratchet & Clank, for example. And what I noticed is if you're using upscaling in the mix, sometimes it gets even worse. And I could use just the 7600 and the 7600 XT in these comparisons uh, because they're basically the same card, just that one has 8GB VRAM and the other has 16GB VRAM. But I thought it would be much more interesting using a stronger card with 8GB, in this case the RTX 3070, versus a slower card with 12GB. And I think that the results were way more interesting this way. Is 8GB VRAM really not enough in 2024? Well, I believe that for entry-level cards and 1080p, it is definitely enough. Entry-level cards and 1080p, or maybe 1440p with upscaling, but anything apart that, you want the absolute minimum of 12 gigabytes. If possible, of course, 16 gigabytes. More VRAM, it's like the RAM. It's never more, it's never worse. Never worse. But will 8 gigabytes VRAM be enough for much more time? Well, that's a different question, and I believe it won't. With some other games and several other games coming in 2024 this year, till the end of the year, that, that games that come with direct storage, and we can see even entry-level cards like the RX 7600, the RTX 4060 suffering because they have low buzz width and they have only 8GB VRAM, and they're actually suffering in terms of, of VRAM capacity and bandwidth, towards newer games like Ratchet and & Clank and some others that use direct storage, for example, the, the newest Forza Motors, Motorsport, I believe, it's just that, Forza Motorsport or something like that, uh, that game also uses direct storage and lower tier cards with low amount of VRAM, well, they just suffer a lot. For at least the next two years, 12 gigabytes will be the absolute minimum, but I believe that most vendors will have just 12 gigabytes as the entry-level card and then 16 gigabytes and above uh, in the other cards to come, like we have, for example, on the AMD lineup with 20 gigabytes for the 7900 XT and 24 gigabytes for the 7900 XTX. And this is a point to note because, as you saw in this video, in some specific scenarios, a stronger 8 gigabytes card can actually be outperformed by a slower 12 gigabytes one because, once again, the stronger card is lacking VRAM, then it's lacking bandwidth in some case scenarios, and uh, the slower card will actually outpace the stronger card because of that, because it has enough, enough VRAM compared to the stronger card. So those scenarios are interesting to see and actually happen more than people think. But considering how cheap VRAM is nowadays, I believe that all vendors should put at least 16 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes should be the minimum because it costs like 20 bucks or not even 20 bucks to put another 8 gigabytes in the card, make the card a bit, well, a bit more expensive, maybe 20 bucks more expensive, but with 16 gigabytes VRAM versus the 8 gigabytes VRAM. Everyone would buy it and it would, be, it would just be much better for the gaming community to have always more VRAM, like we now have more RAM. RAM is now cheap and we can get 32 gigabytes for a really, really good good price, and that's what we should get. 16 gigabytes will suffice, but it just makes no sense unless you're building a really, really budget system 
well, 32 gigabytes is the way to go. And the same goes for VRAM. If vendors start putting 16 gigabytes as the minimum, or at least 12 gigabytes, it will just be much better for the gaming uh, community overall. That's what I believe. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, as that really helps a lot. And if you have any question, any doubt that you have, anything that you want to ask, just go to the comment section and leave the comment there. As usual, I'll answer as fast as I can. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed it.